Everyone assumes quantum computers will replace classical computers. But Intel just built a classical processor that solved a quantum computing problem faster than Google's quantum computer. The battle between classical and quantum isn't over, it's just getting started and the winner might surprise you. October 2024 changed everything we thought we knew about the quantum versus classical computing race. Intel announced their new neuromorphic processor, Loihi 2, had solved a quantum simulation problem faster than IBM's quantum computer. Not by a little, by orders of magnitude. Dr. Mike Davies, Intel's neuromorphic computing director, delivered the shocking news. We've demonstrated that specialized classical architectures can outperform quantum computers on problems we thought were quantum's exclusive domain. Intel wasn't alone. MIT researchers published a paper proving that classical computers can efficiently simulate certain quantum algorithms. Google's quantum team quietly admitted that their Sycamore processor's quantum supremacy demonstration could be replicated by classical computers with better algorithms. The quantum computing industry's response? Panic. Dr. John Preskill, who coined the term quantum supremacy, had to revise his predictions. The boundary between what quantum computers can do uniquely and what classical computers can achieve is more fluid than we initially thought. While everyone was focused on quantum computing breakthroughs, classical computers were quietly evolving into something unrecognizable. Neuromorphic processors that mimic brain architecture. Optical computers that process information with light. Memristive systems that blur the line between memory and processing. DNA computers that use biological molecules for computation. Dr. Carver Mead, the pioneer of neuromorphic computing, explains the revolution. We've been thinking about classical computing wrong. Silicon transistors are just one way to process information. Nature has been computing for billions of years using completely different principles. Here's what the new generation of classical computers can do. Neuromorphic processors. Intel's Loihi 2 can solve optimization problems 1,000 times more efficiently than traditional processors while using 1,000 times less power. Optical computers. Light matters optical processors can perform AI calculations at the speed of light, literally. Memoristive systems. HP's memoristive computers can perform calculations and store data in the same location, eliminating the memory bottleneck. DNA computers. Microsoft's DNA storage system can store exabytes of data in a test tube and perform parallel computations on genetic algorithms. Quantum-inspired classical algorithms. New mathematical techniques that give classical computers quantum-like advantages without requiring quantum hardware. Let's be fair. Quantum computers aren't losing every battle. Google's Willow chip demonstrated something no classical computer can replicate. Exponential error reduction in quantum error correction. IBM's quantum computers are solving chemistry problems that would take classical computers centuries. Dr. Dario Gill, IBM's quantum computing director, defends quantum's unique advantages. Quantum computers don't just process information differently. They process fundamentally different types of information. Quantum states that have no classical computing equivalent. Here's where quantum computers are genuinely superior. Quantum chemistry simulations. Modeling molecular interactions that involve quantum effects. Cryptography and security. Breaking certain encryption methods and creating unbreakable quantum encryption. Optimization problems with quantum structure. Certain types of machine learning and financial modeling. Quantum sensing. 
detecting gravitational waves, magnetic fields, and other quantum phenomena. The shocking truth, these applications represent less than 1% of all computing tasks. For everything else, web browsing, video streaming, gaming, most AI applications, database processing, classical computers are not just competitive, they're dominant. The real future of computing isn't quantum versus classical. It's quantum and classical working together. Microsoft's Azure Quantum Platform already integrates quantum processors with classical supercomputers. IBM's Quantum Network connects quantum computers to classical systems. Google's Quantum AI division uses classical computers to control and optimize quantum processors. Dr. Stefan Werner, IBM's quantum algorithms researcher, reveals the hybrid approach. The most powerful computational systems combine quantum processors for specific quantum tasks with classical processors for everything else. It's not about replacement, it's about specialization. Here's how the hybrid future works. Classical computers handle data pre-processing, user interfaces, network communication, system control, result interpretation. Quantum computers handle quantum simulations, certain optimization problems, cryptographic tasks, quantum sensing. AI systems coordinate, deciding which processor to use for each task, optimizing the workflow, managing resources. The result? Computing systems that are more powerful than either quantum or classical computers alone. Here's the uncomfortable truth about the quantum versus classical battle. Economics might decide the winner more than physics. IBM's most advanced quantum computer costs over $15 million and requires a team of PhD physicists to operate. Intel's latest classical processor costs $10,000 and can be managed by any IT professional. Google's quantum computer requires temperature colder than outer space. NVIDIA's latest AI chip runs in any data center. The quantum computing industry has raised over $2.4 billion in funding. The classical computing industry generates over $500 billion in annual revenue. Dr. Shohini Ghosh, a quantum physicist at Wilfrid Laurier University, acknowledges the economic challenge. Quantum computers need to provide enough advantage to justify their cost and complexity. For most applications, that advantage doesn't exist yet. The quantum computing industry isn't giving up. They're betting on three game-changing developments. Fault-tolerant quantum computers that can run for hours without errors, quantum algorithms that provide exponential speed-ups for practical problems, manufacturing advances that reduce quantum computer cost by orders of magnitude. The timeline for these breakthroughs? Optimistically, 5 to 10 years. Realistically, 10 to 20 years. So who wins the battle between classical and quantum computers? The answer is both and neither. Classical computers are evolving faster than anyone expected. Neuromorphic processors, optical computing, and AI-optimized architectures are giving classical systems quantum-like capabilities without quantum complexity. Quantum computers are proving their worth in specialized applications, but struggling to find broad practical relevance. The future of computing will be hybrid, specialized, and diverse different types of processors for different types of problems. Dr. Michio Kaku predicts, the computer of the future won't be classical or quantum. It will be a symphony of different computing architectures, each optimized for specific tasks, working together to solve problems neither could handle alone. Here's what this means for you. Your smartphone will probably never have a quantum processor but it might have neuromorphic chips for AI tasks. Your laptop will remain classical, but it might use quantum-inspired algorithms for certain calculations. The cloud services you use will increasingly rely on hybrid systems 
that automatically choose the best processor for each task. The quantum revolution isn't about quantum computers replacing classical computers. It's about expanding what computation can achieve. The final battle between classical and quantum computers isn't ending with a winner and loser. It's going to end up with an alliance. Classical computers are getting quantum-inspired capabilities. Quantum computers are being integrated with classical systems. The result is more powerful than either technology alone. The future of computing isn't quantum or classical, it's both working together to solve problems we can't even imagine yet. What do you think? Will hybrid quantum classical systems dominate the future or will one technology eventually win out? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to stay ahead of the computing revolution, subscribe and hit the notification bell because the future of technology is more complex and more exciting than anyone predicted.